A man from Kiladon, with the power of doomsday in his hands and an ache in his heart for a son. It's another knockout. I wish you'd quit knocking them my way. Stick around, gentlemen. Don't leave now. We've got another bout coming right up. Thank you, gentlemen. Yes, sir, my man's getting tired. He can't win them all. I'll have that one, too. Thank you. This is a real bet in town, Jeremiah. You stick with me, and I'm going to raise your take to $15 a day. Like I told you, Mr. Sloan, don't have me days for knocking young buckos around. Today, I'll have me the money for seeing me on to more important things. And what's more important than money? The end of the world, perhaps? Oh, maybe the beginning. Who's the man to say? Just don't let them dreams interfere with your fighting. We're putting all of our money on this next one. Don't worry, Mr. Sloan. For once, this day's earnings mean more to me than they do to you. Come on, let's get another fight going here. All right, gentlemen, despite the fact he's exhausted, Jeremiah O'Neill has agreed to fight any new challenger. Now, who's it going to be? Who's going to challenge the great Jeremiah O'Neill? I've got $50 here, gentlemen, $50 to any man that can last five rounds with him. And on top of that, I'm going to lay three to one. I got the better man. Now, who's going to challenge him? Step right up here. I don't like that fellow's beard. I'd take him if it wasn't so thirsty. <laughs> yeah, well, with a sledgehammer. What do I need a sledgehammer for when I got this? Here's a challenger! Excellent. And a fine-looking lad he is. Get him in a ring. Come on, come on, man. What are you doing? Wait a minute. Sit down. Let me get your shirt. Trying to get me killed? He's an old man. You can take him. Yeah. Think of $50. Yeah, sure. That'll just about cover my funeral. And I'm still back in age against youth and giving odds. Three to one, Jeremiah takes the cowboy. Remember, we're fighting London prize ring rules. A round ends when a man is knocked out of the ring. If he ain't back in 30 seconds, the fight's over. A knockout is 25 seconds. And if our young challenger is still in the ring, awake and ready for round six, he wins 50 silver dollars. All right, boys, let's get ready. In the sunny lust of life he was, strong as an iron wrought keel. With the smile of Ireland in his eyes was the lad they called O'Neill.
Try to hit me. Get back in there. This is London rules. That means you can kick and butt. Hit him, Mr. Roddy. Round three. Make it easy for both of us, lad. Get out and stay out. Come on, boy. Two more rounds. Round four. Oh, the way you're gonna get me out is knock me out clean. No sense of a light. We can't do it. You ain't even hit him. What are you trying to pull? He said he's hit it. I mean, tear off. If he wins on the early end of the world, you're looking for it's going to end right here. 15 seconds, round five. <laughs> Is still in the ring for round six. I declare him the winner of fifty dollars. <laughs> he gave the fight away. One thing's for sure. He didn't do it for nothing. You're wrong, friend. When I get through with Mr. O'Neill, that's going to be exactly what's left. Pay everybody off. Hey. All right. That's 25 for me. Eight for you. And the 10 you owe Mr. Favor. And the 5 you owe Quince. And that just leaves enough for you to buy another round of beers. <laughs> yeah, that was a real good fight. How are you splitting the Jeremiah, 50-50? Yeah, it's all right. You've already gone five rounds. Mr. Roddy fought that fight fair and square. Trail boy, I refereed six fights before you came along. Jeremiah handed your friend that fight. He was only making $10 a day. It was the last day. They figured it was smart of him to make a deal and split the 50. Yeah, who's they? The loser's outside, cooking up the tar and feathers. I don't know what they got in mind for you, but the Irishmen, they're gonna haul out of town. A long way out of town. Wish. Get the wagon and meet me on the back of this place. Out back, we can go now. He isn't any our affair. That fifty dollars makes him our affair. Now get the wagon. <laughs> Why'd you let me win? What makes the green in the mountains a morn? 
or puts a head on a mug of good Kilkenny stout. Well, you sure didn't do either one of us a favor. We gotta get out of here quick. I'm obliged, you lad. But the road I'm traveling, I'm traveling alone. Maybe you don't understand. If those sports out there get a hold of us, neither one of us are gonna be traveling anywhere. Ah, uh, look, lad. My friends are gonna meet us out and back with a wagon. We could be headed north before anybody finds out about it. Did you say north? Yeah. Well, why didn't you say so? I'd be right with you. Look, you haven't got time to pack. No, no, it's the only thing I'm taking with me. Oh, here, I'll, I'll carry it. What's that? There's a saying, lad. It is a fortunate man that knows his own destiny before it overtakes him. Here I have mine. Oh, well. I'll carry your coat. Colin Bucko. Bucko? Oh. Oh, uh, I'm ramrodding the herd. It's a rough trade. Of course, it ain't as rough as yours. <laughs> Nearly a, a means of working my way west. I get me a job at the next hamlet. And hand me a saddle and a, a horse. Yeah, well, the next hamlet, as you say, that ain't but 60 miles away. And we're not going near there. Well, then I'll walk it. With this? I'd carry it a thousand and ten miles further than that, lad, if I had to. Tell me, uh, have you ever worked cattle? Only from behind a knife and fork. Well, maybe it's time to round out your education. Ah, uh, hold on, lad. It's a burden I'd be to you. No, the way I go, I must go alone. To a place unhappily far from the old sod. As bleak and as stony to the soul as a the banshee world of devils. Men call it the St. Cristobal. Well, we're going right through that range. For a fact. Yeah, for a fact. So you're not you're not prospecting, are you? No, lad. I've long since found and lost the best things in life worth searching for. Well, uh, I hear tales of Spanish gold in those hills and men that go in after it seem to come back. And them that does wish they didn't. It's an ugly climb, where time stands still, and even a ghost casts a shadow. This driving of cows, is there much to it? Only one way to find out. Now, to be faster for me purposes. You've got yourself a hat. Pride of his father's eyes was he. When the two put off to sea, with their hopes bound up in a common kit, and their sights on the land of the free. Jesus. Jesus? They call me Toothless. Toothless? Scarlet. Scarlet? Uh, Quince. Quince? Uh, easy, that's my open hand. <laughs> oh, well, what a fine nut of buckos it is. Never, Mr. Favor. Have I seen a crew the likes of this west of Down, Patrick? It's a real pleasure to be working for you. Now, if there's anything I can do for you, just let me know. Uh, well, first off, uh, you might spook the herd in that outfit. Jim, see if you can get him some clothes. Here, let me help you. There, that steady. You'll be straining your backside. <laughs> what? Has he got in the sack? Uh, I don't know. It's something he calls his destiny. Oh. oh. Lord, if he had only knocked your head off, would have saved me two big problems. Yeah, look, boss, a, a fellow like this, there's all kinds of things he could do. I mean, oh. Look at him. He's so strong. He could, he could lift the steer. <laughs> yeah, well, we walk him. We don't carry him. All right. You found him, you find something for him to do. But don't tell me about it, huh? Just surprise me. Hey, 
you asking, boy? In Kilkenny, every newborn babe is known two things. How to do an Irish jig and where to find his supper. Now, come on, lad. Sprightly on your stems. Oh, I find myself doing more fighting than dancing. I wish you'd teach me how you fight. Easier than a jig. He's in the port side, lad. You just keep on jabbing like that until you've got your man transfixed. Trans what? Spellbinded, if you will. And then it's hard over with a starboard like this. That's right, lad. Well, by golly, I think I got it. Mushy, you're supposed to be mixing the mush. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll stir the mush right away, Mr. Wishbone. Hey, hey, round two's coming up. I think you need a manager. You know <laughs> what you're going to have for supper? Mushy. Hey, 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 hey,
They listened hard to a tale of gold long lost in San Cristobal. With Irish pluck and a song to sing, and nary a coin in the purse, the father and son set out to find a treasure that bore a curse. If he wanted you to see it, I'm sure he'd invite you to look at it. Well, it's a rock, all right. There's no more sample you can bet on it. Yeah, probably shot clean through with pure vein. Doggone it, we work all day in the hot sun for a dollar, and every night he chips away for 40, 50 dollars with that chisel of his. You know, I think I've got it figured out. He found that lost treasure in mine, all right. Took a sample to town and had it assayed. Now he's going back to work it. There's just no other reason a man go back into that San Cristobal alone. You suppose he'd cut a fella in? In his lifetime, one man could never spend that much treasure. Yeah. San Cristobal was a banshee haunt of Navajos as had vowed death to the man as had touched the gold and a howling sky for his shroud. She looms, Bucko, like the jaws of hell. Worse than that, a man gets off of this trail. A sacred country, the Navajo. They get real mean about it. If he was in there alone, he could use some help. Of course, it's always nice to have somebody to talk to. You know, before I took up cooking, I used to poke around the hills. Got real handy with pick. It's not a fortune I'm after, Bucko. You might say I'm picking up the ragged edges of my life. Now, dadgummit, Jeremiah, a man's an outright fool to go in there without a real good reason. Uh, some would say I spoke with a phase at midnight, or being touched by a lopsided moon. worry about. I can jury rig this before Wishbone's ready to a noontime meal. All right, well, we'll chow here then. Mushy, my boy, bring up the bellows. And somebody fiddle a tune. It's faster than working to music. X 
excellent son. It reminds me of the day you and I broke our... That mine he can carry a ton of gold in a sack in each hand and one in these teeth. Yeah, that does it. Well done, lad. All right, stew's hot. Come and get it. You know, Rowdy, you and I'd have made a fine team. It's a pity that fate showed her hand so soon. Step up, lad, and get your grub. Move along here. Come on, let's get going. Hey, the spy wagon's on fire. about to ask he might show me all right let's get some packs and patch up this way get that fire all right yeah, this might help well, thank you lad rowdy never once have you been prying into affairs that have no value to any man but myself and i'm deeply grateful lad Tell your friends to forget their dreams of gold. This stone is for a grave. It's taken me up the St. Christabel. Not the, the magic cloud at the end of a rainbow. Well, I guess there's some things a man feels he's got to do. They seafared all the way to Kilkenny for this bit of rock. A touch of the old sod topside can warm even the coldest ground. You have to go deep into those mountains? Deep. Well, you use some company. Maybe I might ride along with you. It's like I told you, lad. The trail I must travel, I must travel alone. But I won't be coming back. Nobody going to ride in that place with a headstone for a grave. Ah, uh, the Irish, they are sentimental. Yeah, but they ain't no blithering idiots. Yeah, but you know what he's going to do? He's coming out of there with a half a million dollars in a tow sack. What are we going to do about it? Well, there ain't no law against us trailing him. Well, Jeremiah is smart enough to outsmart them Navajos. So are we. Sir, I got a feeling we're going to come out of this thing jangling rich. You better believe it. Uh, 
something, Jeremiah? I've never seen them push like this for the San Cristobal. Usually they'd rather drove 60 miles around. Well, may as well say it flat out, Mr. Favor. The lure of gold can do strange things to a man. Even make him forget what he is. What's wrong with your men? There's a disease I carry to them. Too much talk of a past that's better left dead. Wouldn't have a cure in mind, would you? Well, that I have. Painful, but permanent. It's, uh, sorry I am to be leaving you tomorrow, Mr. Favor. Who knows, I... I might even have made a good cow driver. You've got a job any time you want it. Thanks. Good luck. Of the two, twas the son as found the trove, and he was the first to die in a way that brought a lashing pain and a tear to the father's eyes. In case I, in case I miss you tomorrow, I'll be saying goodbye. Oh, there's no need for that. I'm going with you. Rowdy, well, try to understand. I've got to do this alone. It's more than just destiny. It's a reason for living. Look, whatever's, whatever's bothering you, a good steady job on this outfit will take care of that. All right, lad. We'll discuss this further tomorrow. There's nothing to discuss. I'm going with you. Night, Rowdy. Uh, night. Prince Bucko. Wake up. Hey, what are you doing here? After great consideration, I've decided you are the one to have the treasure of the lost parties. Yeah. <laughs> have a good night's sleep, Bucko. Yeah. 
lovelies, let's have ya. Come on. Hey, hey. Come on, me lovelies, let's have ya. Come on, darlings. Ourselves out of here, little on the herd. I never thought Jeremiah would do a thing like that. Yeah, well, uh, maybe it was the only way he could be sure the past would stay dead. Rowdy back yet? Yeah. Say your favor. Huh? Look there. Well, what do you know? Here are your horses. There's the trail. Use both. And use them now. One of my men is still out there hunting horses. You go now. Look, I can't leave my man out there. You have until the sun sets. Stay, and you'll see the sun no more. None of you. Pick him up. Surrounding, can we, Mr. Favor? Twenty of us against one man and three dozen head of cattle. I just hope he finds us or they find him. All right, let's get the herd moving.
right. I have never seen you stand still up here. Rowdy lad, I begged you not to follow me. Go! Go while you can. I will, as soon as you pay your respects. This is the mine you're talking about, huh? Yes. Are you truly interested? Well, I guess everyone's interested in money. The price seems kind of high, though. Come on, let's get out of here. We don't have too much time. company, Jeremiah. Is there a back trail out of here? No. We're trapped. Well, where's your gun? I don't believe in them. Like I told you, I don't intend going out of here. Well, might as well get comfortable. Looks like we're gonna be here. Listen, Rowdy. Riches can fill a man with an ugly desire. The desire to keep. I found myself filled with such an ugly desire. And it cost me the only treasure in the world worth having. On the third night after my son Timothy and I came to this place, I awakened to a noise and saw a figure come into view. I fired. And then I called for Timothy. But he never answered. No, I never would, Rowdy lad. I killed my own son. I never thought I'd be fortunate enough to see the, the likes of him again. But then, as I, I looked across the ring that day, into your face, all the bells of Ireland rang out in me brains. Your face, your, your eyes, the way you smiled. Well, it's, it's true, Timothy was younger. But the likeness, the miracle. I saw again a, a young lad coming over a clover green to, to meet me at the nets. And grown up strong and Anyway, Rowdy, you've given me great pleasure in spending my last remaining days in the living presence of my son. And I, I'd like to thank you. Yeah, well, I figured it was something like that. As I told you, it's a, it's a fortunate man that knows his own destiny. And I knew mine then, as you'll see by that headstone. Now, Rowdy Bucko, take a look and see if you can still see him.
And the two of them now rest in peace where barren dreams were sown. And the howling wind blows dust against the shamrock on their stone. Riding drag. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll like it back here. You ever think of that? Huh? Jeremiah? He found what he wanted most. No one can take that away from him. Yeah. Rowdy, you've given me the wonderful feeling. I've shared me last remaining days almost in the living presence of me son, and I'm deeply grateful. All the gold there was naught, but the father's love for his son carried shining bright beyond the grave long after their grief was done. like a ghost. When are we gonna get off of this graveyard of a mountain? As uh, soon as Clay gives the word. Huh? How's it look? Well, the pass is all right, I guess. You could lose a grown steer down those old mine shafts, though, and the mountain's full of them. Anybody still around here? No, it's right riding through a graveyard. Busted up machinery, busted down shack. Get a look at the town? Yeah, from a distance. Uh, I can see any reason to poke around that old ghost town at night. Yeah, once the gold veins give out, the town's got about as much chance as a sheep with its throat cut. Howdy! Howdy, friends, how are you? Howdy! <laughs> well, I'm sure surprised to find anybody around here. Yes, sir. <laughs> My name is Josia Brewer. Oh, howdy. My name's Favor. I'm trail boss in this outfit. Pleased to meet you. You uh, still prospecting these parts? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Everybody else moved on. Always intended to follow them someday, but uh, never got around to it. Well, that was ten years ago. Yeah, yeah that's right. Now, uh, me and Tilly there, were, we're too old and we're sort of set in our ways. Um, Mr. Brewer, we... Like to sit around and socialize, but we got a lot of work to do. Oh, sure, sure. Nobody stays on Lost Mountain no more. Now, well, let's get moving, Ronnie. No wish. As soon as you're through feeding the night shift, you can move on to noon camp. But you said there was nobody left up here. Well, there ain't any prospectors left, except maybe ghosts. How do you make a living up here? Don't have to. We live off the land. Except uh, always looking for an outcropping. Might lead me back to Mother Lode. It was here once. So was the Garden of Eden, but the good Lord hadn't seen fit to lead us back to that, neither. Now, see there, I was wondering if you got another one of these. You see, Tilly kicked the Hitchens loose the other day in a lost mine. No, mister, that's the only shovel I got. Is that so? Well, I'd, uh, I'd be willing to pay for it. Well, that ain't the point. How'd I dig my fire pit? How'd I level my wagon, dig my wheels out of gumbo? Uh. Well, you see, it, it ain't so easy for me to, to get off of this here mountain. Now, you, you... Well, you could pick up another one of these first time you pass through, eh? 
give you ten dollars. You aren't serious. Well, I'm a poor man. I need this shovel right bad. Uh, I double it. I'm not the kind of a man to take advantage. All right. <laughs> it's all right. I understand. I know a shrewd fellow when I see one. Give you 25 for it. Uh, all I got is this here dust, but uh, worse at least that much. More like 30. Hey, it's a deal. Sure, I'll give you the pick, too, if you want it. You will, huh? Hey, uh... Well, that's fair enough. Thank you. Thank you very kindly. <laughs> Come on, Tilly. <laughs> These good people have got work to do, and, uh... <laughs> so do we. <laughs> yes, sir, so do we. All that gold dust for that beat-up shovel? Suppose he's on to something? Oh, no, no, that mountain's been picked cleaner than a hound's tooth. Yeah, these old sourdoughs, they get a little overcooked in the sun. Now, where do you think you're going? I'll eat something cold later. You'll eat something cold. I offer him anything cold and he'd scream like he was bit. Well, come on, man, I got it all ready. Come on, Hank, I gotta get things done here and move out. Guess I'm not feeling so good. I ain't hungry. <laughs> First time he ever turned down a meal. Funny thing, uh, my stomach's acting up too. Well, I'm feeling fine, Mr. Wishbone. Well, it can't be the grub. Those fellows must have rusty canteens. books out. I just wanted to see where you was off to. Uh, you're sneaky in a bobcat. <laughs> Come on. Up. Set. <laughs> oh! Up you go. Uh, there you are. <laughs> and you, um, uh, stop chewing that candle wax. Where in the world did you find her? <laughs> to do something about her, Pa. She is getting of an age where I can't handle her. Oh, she's all right, Priscilla. Not much different than you and Jessie when you were growing up. Oh, we didn't grow up wild as weeds. Ma was alive and there was a town here. And there will be again. You'll see. I don't take up the house. <laughs> Not even with pay dirt. I'm really on to it this time, Priscilla. Oh, sure, Pa. I know. I, I know what's pulling you down today, honey. Oh, let me forget it. But next year, it's going to be different for you. You're going to get a present now, anyway. Happy birthday, honey. No. Oh. What's going on down there? Oh, Pa was just showing me Ma's necklace. But I want you to have it. It's all you have in the world. You keep it, Pa. But I don't need it. This new lead pans out. I can get a dozen strings like this. It'll be like it was in the old days, when the high grade ran 64,000 a ton. And with your dowry, you'll be the catch of the territory. And Meg's going to be schooled in Europe, and you, Jesse, you're going to have... Uh, right now, I think it's more important that we get that well fixed. You mean... You want me to waste time tinkering with that? Oh, I don't care, Pa. It's all right with me. Jesse and I won't have to do any more cooking and scrubbing. And Meg can get filthy and stay that way. Or Mary will all get so thirsty, we'll just have to leave this cursed mountain. Plenty of water down in Dutch Flats. Water and decent, civilized people.
that wasn't fair, Priscilla. Uh, what's well, somebody's just got to keep reminding him. We can all get stuck up here much longer. You'll be as old and ugly as I am. Still. Oh, no, well, poor men don't have to be rich to get a husband. Well, I don't mind being an old maid. And no dowry is worth burying you and Meg up here. We have time to wait, and, and maybe if we ever do get to some place where we can know people, I'm going to tell them I don't intend to marry, and you and Meg will be free. You won't have to sit around waiting for Pa to voice me off first on some poor man. Now, you just wait a while before you make up your mind. Pa will strike it. Oh, Ma believed in that dream, too. She's buried out there. Sil, if we gave up now and Pa had to leave this mountain, you know what would happen to him. I know. Oh, Jesse. Oh. You good girl. Now you better put that necklace back where it belongs. Tarnation to do with the frying pan and the dish pail and the rest of it. Boom, well, what's going on here? Why aren't you headed for noon camp? And where's Clay? He's disappeared along with about half of my pans. Has anybody seen Hank? Oh, I did. He's down by the stream. In fact, he's washing one of your pans, Mr. Wishbone. Washing? <laughs> pan and gold, more likely. Well, find out who else is missing. Roddy, get the rest of the men back here and fast. Right. <laughs> That fooling. Come look. Hello, Mr. Brewer. Remember me? Let me see. Um, you're the curious fellow. Wondered if I still prospect around here. <laughs> yeah, you remember me all right. What are you carrying that critter for? Well, it's deep going's a little hard on calves. They drop out and get lost to coyotes. I saw your tracks and I thought, I'd like some meat. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> you ain't gonna kill him. Oh, uh, this is my daughter, Meg. She's right fond of animals. Oh, uh, well, why don't you ask your pa? And maybe you could raise him and you... Oh, that's my older daughter, Jessica. Oh, I had no idea. And yeah, that's my oldest daughter, Priscilla. <laughs> no idea at all, man. Pa, pa, look, there's another one. Well, looks like while you was following me, that fellow was following you. Yeah. And another one. What are you waiting for, girl? Set the table. We got callers. <laughs> they, Hank, Les, Nelson, and Moore. Now, they'll be back, boss, tail down and crawling. Everyone knows there ain't no pay dirt up here. Or any gold at the end of a rainbow. But if any of you are itching to go chasing it, let me know about it right now. And if any of you still got any doubts, I'm sending Rowdy into Dutch Flats to sign on some new drovers. What's on your boss? I got nothing more to say. As long as we're shorthanded, we'll drive the herd real slow and easy. Now get back to work. That boss, Clay might have just gone to check the noon camp. Yeah, I mean, losing Hank and the rest of them ain't so bad, but, uh, you know, Clay was turning out to be a pretty fair drover. I thought I made myself clear. Well, you made yourself clear, all right. That way they don't draw any trail and pay. That's their mistake. Now, are you riding into town, or am I? No, no, I'll go. Well, I wish you fellas all the luck in the world. Could happen. <laughs> yes, sir, who knows? I've been looking for the mother load all my life. Why, you might just stumble onto it, yes, sir. Uh, would, you, would you like some more coffee, Mr. Forrester? Oh, yes, please. Uh, and the name is Clay, if I'm not being too forward. Oh, oh no. Uh, of course not, Mr. Forrester. Clay? Clay. Oh, I'll see if my calf's all right. Pa. Oh. Oh. Another one. Well, come in, mister. Join your friends. You ought to be honored, Mr. Brewer. That's Rowdy Yates, our ramrod. 
didn't exactly come here to join my friends. I have a seat, Rowdy. Uh, there's uh, some of that chicken left, uh, Priscilla. I'll fetch it. No, I'm, I ain't visiting, miss. Nonsense. We have more than enough. Well, stop acting like a ramrod, Rowdy. Join the party. Look, I came here to talk some sense into you people. You know, Mr. Faber's sending me into Dutch flats to get replacements for all of you. You too, Clay. Well, we ain't stopping you. I'm not ready to leave yet, Rowdy. Don't you realize you're going to be stuck out here in the middle of nowhere without jobs? Well, it doesn't look like nowhere to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Yates. Look, Mr. Brewer, if you're smart, you'll get rid of them. They're pretty rank when they've been drinking. Well, I wish I could persuade you to stay. No, I can't. I got business in Dutch Flats. That's a four-hour ride. Everybody's going to be asleep when you get there. You can't do any business or find food till morning. Oh, I think you'd better eat, Mr. Yates. Yeah, she's, uh, she's right about that. Well, uh, I guess I'd better be uh, running Jenny, get, uh, get Mr. Yates some hot coffee. Uh, Carr, yeah? will you play us a tune on the music box? Yeah, I guess some music would be a good idea. Uh, oh, uh, Priscilla, did you uh, care to dance? Oh, no, thank you. Why don't you ask my sister? Well, because I asked you, that's why. She's a little young for me, don't you think? Uh, Jessica, why don't you ask Rowdy to dance? He's pretty good. Ah. Uh. You go ahead. How come you ain't dancing? Uh, careful, this is a little hot. At least you don't feel like dancing, hmm? Don't tell me what to do. You ain't bossing me no more. Hey, drink that and sober up, will you? Drink it yourself! Howdy. Howdy. Come on, Hank, let's finish that ham. How about you, Mr. Brewer? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> Heal me in. I'm so sorry. It wasn't your fault. You can't go out in the cold like this. You'll catch your death. No, I'll be all right. No. No, you, you come with me. You can wear the shirt of paws while I, while I dry yours. Oh, thanks. Oh, that's mine. She's a very beautiful woman. You take after her. Thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to stare. Oh, well, that's all right. We, uh, we don't see too many girls on a trail drive, either. That makes us even. I suppose you... you think we're sort of strange living out here alone? Well, I didn't say that. Well, it's not bad. We've got everything we need. Priscilla's got books for Meg's schooling. And there's nothing about prospecting my pa don't know. He was here when this town was just booming. Yeah, I understand it was uh, quite a place. And it will be again. Look. Do you see this necklace? Those are real nuggets. Right out of the mother load. Yeah. That must have been something to see. I'll show it to you. There's never been a bonanza to match it. Hmm. And, and you're... Uh... Your pa, he says there's more of this stuff in the land around here? Oh, don't, Rowdy. I'm sorry, I... You don't belong on this mountain. And it was wicked of me to tempt you. It's feeding time. Would you like to come see my animals? They're upstairs in the attic. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, you go right along. I'll be up in a minute. Two, two. I'd say that little filly was pretty taken by you. But she could tell you a lot, or uh, has she already? Is that why you're buttering up the other one? Maybe. You're a real sidewinder, Clay. You know, if you'd seen that goal that Brewer was throwing around, you might not be so high and mighty. Yeah, all I'm looking for is trail end pay. I ain't gonna get no gold dust in my eyes. Yeah, well, maybe the game ain't worth it, but... One more card I got to see first. Come on. <laughs> I'm out. Pop. Yeah. 
Sheriff, what is it? It's that Mr. Clay. He's been asking questions. You know, about where you dig and all. He's got a knife he wants to give me, but I said nothing. Hmm. Always knew you had the sense of the family. You think Chris is dumb to like him? No, not necessarily. Honey, you remember that old gold rocker that's so far from the Blasted Creek? Blasted's right! That's where you said all them words I gotta forget. Yeah, well, uh, I think it'd sort of keep him out of trouble if he dug there. <laughs> He's gonna be awful angry, but I'll hold my ears. <laughs> Here you are, Rowdy. Oh. Well, thanks, Jessica. Looks better than it did when it was new. Yeah, found out. The little one, Meg, she told me where to dig. And yeah, we'll make it six feet under for all I give a darn. I'll count you in. Don't do me any favors, will you, Clay? Oh, come on, I need you. As soon as Hank and the others find out, we'll be on holding them. That's gonna be your worry. I got business in Dutch flats. Look, I give you my word. Either we we'll strike pay dirt tomorrow or we we'll ride back together. Now, what's wrong with that? Uh, well, if we, we, we won't get back any later if we ride tomorrow. Tomorrow, huh? <laughs> The old rocker, just like she said, I guess this is it. Hmm? This is his prospecting holes all over these hills, Clay. These diggings are all played out. Oh, uh, come on, you agree to take a look. Howdy! You two ain't thinking of prospecting around here, are you? Is there any reason why we can't? You got a claim here or something? No. Ten years, I never found a trace of anything here. Reckon it was all worked out. Ten years, that's good enough uh, for me. Ah, you know he can't let on anything. He's just trying to scare us off. Yeah. I'll bet you cow folks wouldn't know gold if you saw it. Well, I've panned before. Do tell. I'll lend you my shovel and my bucket. Uh, look, you said you'd give it a try. Give it a try, huh? <laughs> yep, yeah, now I've heard everything. Yes, sir. You got any idea what it really takes to wash gold up here? Have you? Well... First, you got to torch your water clear up from that creek. Yes, sir. Of course, you could use that old rocker there. When it's full of dirt, it's mighty heavy and needs a lot of water. Creek is a long way down there. <laughs> it ain't as easy as uh, sitting in a saddle all day and letting your horse do all the work. All right, Clay, we'll trade off. You dig for a while and I'll haul the water. <laughs> <laughs> All right, come on, back him up, my sheep. Back him. Pleasure. Easy. He's grown. Finish hitching. Can you send a clay of the others? Well, no, but I got an idea, boss. So have I. I don't want them trailing after us, looking for their gear. Dump it. Just dump it and leave it right out here. Exactly. All right, but somebody better tell him. I don't want him holding me responsible. Oh, I'll tell him. You just dump it. Not so fast, not so fast. You're going to sluice out that pay dirt. Oh, if you know so much about it, you do it yourself. You can do the digging, too. I'm through with this. You fellas don't know from Dean. Yeah, well, nobody's asking you, Brewer. You had any sense, you wouldn't shout all over the diggings. There you are, you asked for it. <laughs> Look at him working away like a bunch of beavers. Yeah, we thought you'd be back in Dutch Flats by now, Rowdy. Guess he didn't really care about us strays after all, huh, Clay? Find what you were really looking for, Ramrod? Oh, you get your, get your hands out of there. Look, Hank. It's gold. Hey, my whole rocket's full of it. Wait, 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 Trouble! All right, now. You simmer down. You with those nuggets, put them back in that rocker. Unless you want to trade them for some lead. 
What's the matter with you, Brewer? You burned just because you didn't strike it? Neither did you, mister. Take it easy, Brewer. It happens we're all friends around here. You that right, Clay? Well, come on, Riley, tell him! All right. Now we got that settled, you and your three men get up on the ledger piece. Lots of land there, we can stake out your own claims. <laughs> All right, old man. Let's go. Now you tell me something, old timer. Just what are you fishing for? Fishing? Yeah, that's right. Me and Rowdy could have handled them drovers, but we didn't need any help from you. Always looking for a hook, ain't you? Matter of fact, didn't want a lot of shooting around here because of my girls. My daughters hadn't taken a shine to you, I'd have run you off them other fellows. Oh, that's mighty big talk for an old man. Maybe. Long as that bunch hangs around up there, you're gonna need all the help you can get. Yeah, I ain't worried about them. Well, you should be. You take my advice, you get into town as fast as you can, register this claim. Fine and gold is one thing. Hanging on to it is another. You know, he's, he's got a point there. Uh, well, uh, uh, aren't we supposed to dig some more first? Just enough hole to prove you work the claim. Uh, can we keep on using your shovel? Yeah. And, uh, my pick, too. Now you get going. I'll have my daughters bring you some food. You know, that old geezer's right. As soon as they find nothing up there, they're bound to be back here, sure shooting. Hey, Hank, that's it! You got it, Hank! Wait, what's that's it? it? It's fool's gold again. Don't you have enough brains to tell the difference? Maybe that's what we saw down there in that rocker. It was the real thing, all right. You ain't never seen nothing to touch it. Put some away. Get some more water. Hank, maybe we just keep on digging deeper. <laughs> Rowdy? <laughs> you, you ready should eat something. Oh, this was awfully nice of you girls to bring this out here. Outside of part. I don't know who else I'd rather see strike it. Yeah, well, you might change your mind after we've been around here a while. I don't think so. I just hope that you've hit the real thing. What do you mean? Well, Pa's found colors here, too, but it's just been tailings. Yeah, no, we found nuggets. I think it's worth registering. Pa said you had the makings of a real hard rock man. When you come back from registering your claim, we're going to have a celebration. You are coming back tonight. Fast as we can ride. All oh, right. Please be careful. Oh, I will. Don't think I want to miss a celebration, do you? <laughs> Something else I gotta do in Dutch class besides file my claim. I gotta make sure I get those replacements for Mr. Boss. Oh, I was just saying, boss, about the replacements. Uh, I wasn't gonna let you down. Oh, no, no, no. Don't bother. I'll, I'll pick up the five new drovers myself, along with signing up a new ramrod. Boss? Who are you calling, boss? You've got more gold under your feet than he'll ever see in a droving in a hundred years. Yeah, but I still let him down. I'll set up your location marker. You fellas better get what Meg tells me is true. What's that? I heard him talking. Who? The others. They said Pa's helping you. Then they could dig there forever and not find nothing. So two of them's going into town to file a claim on this place here where you're digging. Thanks. Let's go. Someone coming. It 
against him, all right? We can still outrun him. I'm going to make sure of that. I'm going to all my ammunition with you. When you run out, circle back and help Morrison Nelson at the diggings. They don't need me. There's only the old man and the girl. I know. But Clay and Ronnie can walk back there and make a fight of it. Here, take this. Let them think just that. Here, you take my gun and fire. Huh? Where are you going? Try and find my horse. You'll never make it. We ain't gonna make it much here either. Keep them busy, huh? All right. Sorry, I can't use all of you. I just need four drovers and a ramrod. I did some ramrodding for the Donahue brothers. Been up the Chisholm with them, the Sedalia. Here I got it! They're fine to get to the assay office. You must have struck something big to risk your life for it. Maybe yes, maybe no. You file alone or with a partner? No, my partner is up on Lost Mountain. Lost Mountain? Lost Mountain. Oh, yeah. Oh, Mr. Clark. We might as well get that business done now. It'll be fine if you want to sign up. Have you heard, Mr. Favor? There's a new strike up on Lost Mountain. Lost Mountain? Yeah. I got to lay in my supplies before they're all gone. But. Oh, Mr. Arthur. <laughs> How much you look like your mother. Oh, except for the necklace. Oh. It's gone. Uh, what's gone? The necklace. Well, it was here last night. I was showing it to Rowdy. Oh, you don't think that he could? Oh, no, of course not. But he was the only one outside of us that knew where it was. Jesse, I moved it. He's a fine young man. Oh, I know. Oh, I know. Do you think he's going to like me? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, Pa. Mom's dress fits, but the necklace would just make it perfect. Could I wear it? Uh, well... Oh, please, just for tonight. Well, just show me where it is and I'll go get it. Well, I don't rightly know where it is. I can't say. Well, why not? Uh, well, uh, Jesse... Oh, Pa! You never were very good at fooling. Well, Jesse, you see... Look, I did it for Priscilla. <laughs> you did what? 
I seeded the boy's claim with it. Oh, Pa. Now, Jesse, I knew how you girls was feeling, see, and I figured it was the only sure way to keep him here. Well, what do you think they're going to say after they find out there's nothing there? I'll make them my partners. Now, I'm really on to something, Jesse. But see, I'm a little old and I need them to help work the place. They'll never forgive us when they find out. Yes, they will. Well, I'll handle it, not Jessica. You keep your mouth shut. Hmm? Better get off, I think. Of course, can't make it on this hill. We'll walk it. Lucky for me, it was a piece of rock that hit my face and not a bullet. That makes us even. Skin my elbow, lost my horse. Who cares? We got this file paper, and that's all that counts now. Our worries are over. Yeah. Time they'll saw away all those nuggets of ours that they can lay their hands on. And yeah, we ain't got a cartridge left between us. Brewer will have some. Well, you know, he might even give us a hand. Yeah. Oh, but those diggings are going to be hard to take. I don't want no bows. I know. You like burrs and bugs. Clay and Rowdy are here. Get your claim all right? Yeah, but it wasn't easy. You got any shells to fit this? What's trouble? Well, less than the others are working our claim. You want to give us a hand? Well, let's not be hasty. No reason for anybody to get all shot up. And it's for nothing. Jesse, I agree. There's other ways to do this. How? Well, for instance, I go and have a little talk with them. They got no call with me. Uh, they ain't going to listen to you uh, either. I don't mean to hand this over to you, old timer. This is our fight. It's really ours, too. What she means is, shooting can be risky for all of us. Now, if I can't settle this thing my way, there'll be plenty of time for fireworks later. Priscilla, get the boys cleaned up. We'd better wash that out. Jesse, I'm counting on you to see if they keep out of trouble. And uh, don't start none yourself, understand? your pa, ain't you? He can take care of himself. You know, you make a real good nurse. Oh, thank you, sir. What's bothering you, Jessica? All I can think about is that you two were almost killed. Well, that could happen on a trail drive just as easy as here. Sure, Thanks. I'd just soon risk my neck for a gold mine any day. <laughs> now, what's the matter, Jessica? Nothing. I'll be all right. You know, Pop, I just can't believe it. Hank? Hey, it looks like you ran into trouble. Yeah. What's he doing here? Ask him if you don't believe me. The old codger's trying to tell us they beat you to it. He's right. They did. Maybe now you'll clear out of here. Sure, but we're gonna dig some pay dirt out of here first. You could dig here from now till doomsday. You wouldn't turn up tobacco money. What about them nuggets? You seen them? Sure, I seen them. I seen them before you. I put them there. All them nuggets? Huh? You put them there? That's right. My gals took a shine to them, fellas. I sold this claim so they hang around here a little longer. <laughs> That's a real good story, Pop. And I'd believe you if he wasn't all fired anxious to get us out of here. I ain't gonna be responsible for no more trouble. Somebody's have to get killed. There's sure one way to find out about all this. That's right, Pop. Now you dig! Something must have happened to him, all right. 
Are these the right caliber? Yeah, great. Thanks. Let's go. Rowdy, please don't go. Now, I don't want Clay to go, Jess, but if Pa is in trouble... Pa's got only himself to blame, Syl. Why should we let Rowdy and Clay take any more chances? There isn't any gold. There never has been. It's all a lie. What are you talking about? What do you call these? Those are the nuggets from Mom's necklace. But why would Pa do oh, that? Oh, Syl, he thought he had to. He thought that if they struck it, that maybe they'd stay, and, and then maybe... Maybe you'd catch yourself a couple of prize suckers, is that it? Well, Priscilla didn't know. But you did, huh? Rory, don't. She did it for me. Would a girl as pretty as Jessica have to cheat to catch a man? Priscilla! Priscilla! It's Pop! I followed him. Those men are gonna hurt him. He said there ain't no more gold, but they don't believe him. Serves him right. Howdy, let's go. Maybe we can get our jobs back, huh? You were mighty anxious for Pa's help when there was gold involved. Now that he's in trouble, it's a different thing, isn't it? That ain't the reason. Pa's in trouble because of those men. Clay brought them here, but you were supposed to take them away. Yeah, well, I tried. Well, not very hard. I warned you not to stay, not to get gold fever. Oh, don't ask him for help. We can go ourselves. No, no. We'll go after him. But, but there are four of them and, and only two of you. Oh, sure. You really taught her to count good, didn't you? Here's all the help we need right here. Well, how are we getting to move? I know. Brewer got us to do it. Yeah, come on. Let's stampede him. This way! Nothing. Not a gold darn thing. All right, Brewer, you give us a lot of fast talk about a rich outcropping. You Where is it? Around. It's um, up the mountain a piece. All right, take us there. Well, I can't promise nothing. I seen indications, of course. That ain't I what you were saying before. Now let's go. Here we are. Here we are. Here we are for the mountain. They'll be back. Here we go. Here we are. Go. Let's go. Let's go. Hey. Let's go. Look. Look. Now look. I found. Color on this mountain, lots of times, but never led to much. I couldn't take you to the mother load of my life to turn it on. But it does, old man. It does. Here we are, school. Here. I'll take it, and I'll take him. Somebody good for you. Hey, they're jumping on Clay. They must have struck something. Look at him. Is he going crazy? Dirty jumpers. Come on. And now we're leaving. Yeah, but you wouldn't uh, want to have anything to do with any of them now. They got the gold fever bad. Oh, I know a few cases that have been cured. Uh, I hope that Clay doesn't feel beholden or anything. I mean, Priscilla doesn't expect anything out of him. No, he's uh, kind of a sensible fellow, you know. Well, after all, a girl's got to think about herself, too. Pa sold this digging equipment in the house. We can have all kinds of pretty clothes. And, well, Priscilla will have all kinds of chances now that we're leaving. She can't just take the first man she sees. Can she? Well, men would be lucky to get a girl like that. It's awful good of you to... Rescue Pa, seeing you were so angry at Jessica and me. Well, you can't exactly blame a father for acting like a father, especially when he's got three girls to marry off. Oh, 
You don't suppose Rowdy took Pa's maneuvering serious? As a matchmaker, Pa's a much better miner. Rowdy, no. He, he knows a drover's life isn't anything to offer girls like you. Jessica's so pretty. Well, prettiness isn't the only thing a man looks for in a wife. Uh, you trying to ease your conscience because you think that you made a fool of me? No, no, that's the truth. You, you wait till you get to town and you find a whole bunch of solid, respectable citizens just, just waiting for a girl like you. Oh. Where's Paul? Oh, he's packing some of Ma's things. What's the matter? Somebody says he struck it on the other side of the hill. We gotta get Paul going before he hears about this and we'll be here the rest of our lives. I hitched Tilly to the buckboard. Take a last look around. Well, Pa, you've been looking at it for the last 30 years. Come on. You hear about the strike over the hill? <laughs> That's what all the rest is about, huh? You don't have to worry about me anymore. I'm through. I've been watching those gold crazy people over there. Been like seeing myself, looking in the mirror. I wouldn't care if somebody said they found gold right here in our front yard with Ruby and Ghost. We're going. Oh, Pa. <laughs> 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 hey, whose gear's that? Uh, well, a couple of drovers came by and said they was experienced, so, well, since we were short-handed. Mean you found somebody around here willing to sign on? Uh, any objections? After losing two days to gold fever and being short-handed, of course not. Well, where are they? Um, come on out, fellas. Call these men experience? I know greenhorns when I see them. Looks like they're gonna take a lot of breaking in. You knotheads think you can ride drag? Oh, uh, well, uh, uh, anything you say, sir. All right, then, get. I got no objection to your cooking wishbone. When it comes to hiring drovers. Oh, well, give them time, boss. Give them time. Well, I don't get it, Mr. Wishbone. Get what? Well, I'd have sworn them fellas was Mr. Rowdy and Mr. Clay. Some aren't. You start out with problems, then you meet up with new ones. Whatever they are, however they happen, they have to be met. That's my job. Bill Favor's my name, Trail Boss. Next, bro. Look here. Tracks bigger than the span of my head. Puma, and an oversized one at that. Any idea which way you go? Any more tracks? Farther on up there, we hit a moss bed, but they're not as clear as these. Something must have scared him before we had time to finish up on the steer. He'll be back then. We'll keep the herd out in the open tonight. Nobody sleeps. All right, get the wagon. We use the car for bait. Right. Worse than a snake. Black hearted as night. Quicker than a rattler and twice as deadly. Put the poison on my sheet. Yes, sir, Mr. Wishbone. Sure like to get my hand on that cat. Any of you men ever eat Puma Pahia? Puma what? Pahia. Now there's a delicacy. You lay on a slice of Puma steak, and then you garnish with a layer of onions, and then a layer of clams. Clams? Oh, that's right, clams. And then another layer of puma steak. 
and a layer of vegetables, and they pour on some good liquor, let it simmer for six hours and steam through. Where are you gonna get clams? Just one of you get me the puma. I'll dig up the clams. Oh, you're really funny, Wishbone. There's one thing about woods and coyotes, you can hear them. But a puma, they're deadly quiet. Unless you're close enough to hear one of them purr. Purr like a kitten? Oh, shut up. No mush, not like a kitten. Well, those tracks make that cat bigger than any I've ever even heard about. He that big, he could just about chew a bird all by himself. Now, keep an eye open. He could be coming out of a hundred different places to disappear the same way. I guess we're only lucky that uh, the cattle didn't catch his scent. Oh, well, right now, the wind's blowing away from the herd. If any of you spot the cat, make sure you got a clean shot at it. A good chance to kill it. We don't want a wounded puma running loose. Now, grab your junk poison from Wishbone and move out. What happened to you anyway? I met that puma. Oh, you sure did. Mm. I did hit it. I... This isn't all my blood. Plenty of it is, though. Well, I'll live. Only one trouble. Puma will, too. Only got one shot. He swiped back. I had to take off. Better get you to wishbone quick, huh? Let me get him to part with some of that whiskey for medicinal purposes. Ain't got a chance against that stuff. I wonder if I have. <laughs> Hand me a pair of scissors, Mushy. Mushy! I'll be branded with cold iron if he ain't drunk from the fumes. Take him on out and give him some air. <laughs> Lost 
lost a lot of blood, Mr. Favor. How are you feeling? No worse than she's gonna feel. Well, this stuff ain't bad taking internal, neither. Hey, you're working. I'm the patient. <sighs> now you stay put. Trapes around outside ain't gonna do you any good. She's out there. He's trying to hold the prairie down. Says it keeps rising up on him. But it ain't all that's gonna be rising up on him. Boss, all right? Not as all right as he thinks. It ain't serious, but what with the blood he's lost and the pummeling that puma gave him. Hey, how's the grazing around here? Well, it's fair. Well, might be a good time to fat up cattle a day or two. No, no, Mr. Fair wouldn't like it if we uh, didn't get the herd moved. Now, who's the doctor, me or Mr. Favor? Well, neither one of you are. You want Mr. Favor to come down with gangrene? Gangrene? Oh, well, your yeah, doctor wish. Well, in that case, grace the cat. Yeah. See any matter. And you, Rowdy. Me? Yep. Seeing it was you who decided to hold up the drive for two whole days. I, I didn't do that. That was your decision. That ain't the way I told it. Well, I gotta change his bandage. Even if I do something wrong, I get blamed for it, even if I don't do it? Well, you might as well get used to it. It's something that always happens to trail bosses. Oh, I ain't no trailblazer. She will someday if Mr. Favor's right, and he usually is. I ain't seen a carriage like that since that time I was in Mexico City. Oh. That one looks like it's been driven all the way from there without stopping. Yeah, she is. I wonder what she's doing out here. I don't know. Why don't you go ask her? Huh? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a good idea, Pete. I'll go with you. Hello. Uh, name's Rowdy Yates. I'm Pete Nolan. I am Margarita Colinas. Did one of you shoot a puma two days ago? Yeah, that's right. You? Uh, no, not me. I'd like very much to meet the man who did. A particular reason? I wish to thank you. Well, you wait here for a minute, and I'll go get it for you. Please. Why ain't the herd moving? Well? Well, uh, I decided to graze him two days. You decided? The lady out here would like to see you, boss. Where? Right here. Uh, this is Mr. Favor, Miss... Uh... Senora Colinas. How do you do, Senora Colinas? You are the one who wounded Puma? Mm, I shot a Puma. Not sure whether I... Killed it or not. I'm afraid that's right. Why did you not go after it and make sure? Well, he would have, uh, miss, uh, senora, but uh, he got pretty well pawed up there. He looked all right. My son, too. Your son? His name was Fernando Colinas. He was nine years old. Two days ago, he would skid. A wounded puma, unable to see its natural prey. Stalked my boy. Stalked him, caught him, and killed him. Deeply sorry, senor. We uh, couldn't track the cat down either before or after we shot him. Miss Colinas, uh, 
Couldn't the men on your place have... My men? That's my man. Does he look like a hunter to you? Nope. What about your husband? Dead. Sorry. And your neighbors? Fifty miles away. What do you want, Mrs. Collins? I want my boy. You have me things here. Cattle, horses, men. One thing you do not have. For now. Who's dead? Who I buried myself. I'll go now. I have what I came for. Sight of the coward who wounded the puma and would not kill it. Senor. The cat was attacking our herd. We, we had to try and stop it. You needn't worry, Mr. Favor. Now that it is wounded, the animal will no longer follow your herd. It has closer and easier prey. See your What did you mean? I have two other children. Younger. Less able to run from the wounded puma. But you need not concern yourself. You and the herd will move on. You will be safe. Wounding puma was an easy way for you. The animal will no longer be able to follow your herd. And you do not have the time to make sure it's dead. I didn't mean to wound it. I, I tried to kill it. For that, maybe someone above me will forgive you. But not I. Hmm? No. Boss, you gotta quit thinking about this thing. I know you're worried about the family and they keep getting all torn up and all, but the most important thing is getting this herd through. That's what you've all told me, isn't it? Cat mauled me pretty good. What chance a little boy have? You didn't bring the cat in this area. Besides, you, you tried to kill it. Come down close to killing you. you did kill the boy. Yeah. Well, there's nothing we can do about that now. Maybe. Something I can try to do about them. You're in charge of the herd. I'll be gone a couple, three days. Maybe more. Going back there alone? You taking any of the hands with you, Mr. Favor? No reason why you should. Ain't any of mountain men. Mr. Wishbone says if Mr. Favor's got worn out the rain, he wouldn't go off hunting a mountain lion without a mountain man to help him track it down. Mushy, you got a worse tongue than a drunken drover, which you'll never be. Drover, that is. So, uh, that's what Mr. Wishbone says, huh? Well, maybe he said something. I mean, maybe I said something like... I'm sure you did. Mushy, you can tell Mr. Wishbone that, uh, Mr. Fave got one ounce of brain left anyway. You sure you want to visit Miss Kalina, boss? Whatever she knows about the human habits would help. You ain't fooling me. Come on, let's go see if the other kids are all right. What do you want here? We're going after the puma. You want the senora's blessing? I want to learn whatever I can from her, or from you that will help us find a cat. 
Perhaps it heals now, and you can wound again. We well, hope we don't launch any mouth from you, old man. Your beard is gray from extreme youthfulness. Now you never mind my beard. Wishbone. Mrs. Holiness? Why did you come here? Do you not have your cattle to look after? I have to ask some questions. That's why I came. Answering them won't be easy for you, I know, but I must ask them. What are you going to ask? How'd my boy die? Did he speak to me before he died? No, he did not. When they brought him to me, he could no longer see. Who brought him to you? Where did they find him? I found him. A little way off the arroyo. As far as you can throw a stone. We'll stay until we find the human and kill it. Will that bring Fernando back to life? No. If I were a man, I would kill you. Would that bring Fernando back to life? I need to know where the puma hunts. It is almost night. We'll start in the morning. I am not a man, and I am Spanish. You are on my land, and I must ask you into my house. You've asked. No, thank you. We'll camp up. Mr. Fair? Must you shame me? We'll be glad to stay the night, Mrs. Colinas. Time for bed, niños. How tall are you? Six four. That's pretty tall. Fair. Can I go up a line as tall as you? Now, let's see. You very well might be. You are good with children. Well, I've got two of my own. Good girls. Just about their age, too. They travel with you in the herd? Oh, no, they're back east. With your wife? No. You uh, were on a trail drive. You'd be skinned alive for taking so long to obey orders. Your mother ordered you to bed. Vamos. Is Mr. Favor handsome, Mama? Carlotta. Oh, I shouldn't have said that till we were outside. What are you grinning at? Who's grinning? Hey, what kind of hunting have you got on your mind? Mi vidas. I can't sleep, Mama. And why can't you sleep? Where's Pablo? 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 Of him? He's opinionated, stubborn, sometimes even pretty stupid. But you're right. I'm fond of him. You've been alone a long time, haven't you? No. I had the children, Pedrillo, their grandmother. Isn't that being alone? My husband died four years ago. Isn't that a long time? What of the mother of your little girl? 
She's been gone a little longer than four years. Do you not think about her? Do you not feel a little lonely yourself? Trail boss doesn't have much time to think about being lonely. But there must be times when even a man in charge of a herd would... Here, let me take it. That bandage should be changed. Yes, it should. Have you been the last week, senor? I got a ranch to run, youngster. <laughs> but never here when you need it. You treat me polite, Padrillo. If you don't, when the senor marries me, I'll fire you. <laughs> what do you mean, when I'm needed? When was I needed? It was the puma. What puma? What happened? A wounded puma that someone failed to kill. Anything happened to Margarita? Fernando. It killed Fernando. Fernando? He was going to be my oldest. I'd give everything I own to get my hands on the man who wounded that puma. It was the trail boss of the herd that went through. Herds move slow. Mount Flint will catch up with them. That will not be necessary. I want to meet that herd boss. He is not with his herd. Well, where is he? Hello, Margarita. Ben. I'm looking for a trail boss. Maybe you. Maybe me. My name's Ben Teagle. You and me are going outside. I'm gonna kill you. Ben, no! Better make sure the kids are asleep. I came here to kill a puma, Mr. Teagle. That's all I came here for. That ain't gonna do you no good. Don't raise that gun no higher, mister. The strain might kill you. He was mighty close. Yeah, thanks to you. You ain't put that gun away yet, mister. Tomas is outside. His dog ran away. He's looking for it. You take the front, I'll take the back. <laughs> Tomas! Tomas, when I throw this rock, the puma comes after me. You climb down and run home. You understand? Yes, I do. Sorry, Tomas. You can come on down now. Say... Now, that was real smart of you to climb up in the rocks here. Where's Pablo? Mr. Favor. 
Joss, I'll get you another dog. I promise. He is asleep. Thank you for what you did. I was probably unfair to you. No need to apologize. You could have gone on with the herd, forgotten about what happened here. No. That is why I apologize. Then we got started. Pick up the trail where we found it last night. Just a favor. I'm going with you. Why? I know the country hereabouts better than you do. We're both after the same thing, ain't we? The cat. Too many men will make the animal take to hide. Feed too many? Nope. Mr. Favor. You will return. When the puma's dead. You stay here. Keep an eye on the children. Yes, sir. It's none of my business, Mr. Table. Go on. Make it a business. Well, there's two of them. Make the odds just about fair, don't it? Senor, the puma is a dangerous animal to hunt. But there is one animal even more dangerous. Hmm? What's that? The man who hunts with you. Maybe so. I tried to warn him, Senora. Say, just say. I'd say that's where he's heading. The tracks? Disappeared. But hills like that's where mountain cat would hold up during the day. Deagle? That sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Mount up with him. Pick up anything? I just been talking to Mr. Favor. He don't think we're ever gonna find that puma this way. What does he think? We need more men. Well, I don't see none handy. That's why he wants you to ride back to the ranch. Get Flint to go over to my place and come back with a dozen hands. Oh, that makes sense. Mr. Frank. He's gone up ahead. I'll join him. It's funny he wouldn't come and tell me himself. He didn't want to waste any time. You know him better than me. It'll be not time to get back. We'll have a fire going. Make it easy to find us. Uh, that will. Well, I hope you don't catch that cat before I get back. I'd sure hate to miss being in on the hill. Yeah, but, uh, that'd be a shame. Yeah. Anything 
up above them. Where's Wishbone? He thinks the cat had for higher ground. He's waiting until we get over the ravine. <laughs> He's no kid. Made a good excuse for him to sit down for a while. Mr. Favor, how much of this are you doing for the kids and how much for Margarita? Does it uh, make a difference? No difference. Thought I'd ask, that's all. Mr. Favor! I can see the whole ravine. There's nothing down there. Well, come on up, then. You know something? It's not the safest thing in the world to be right in front of a man with a drawn gun. And them are back. I didn't follow your orders today, Mr. Favor. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Why? Well, the way I saw it, the time I got back with all those men you wanted, that cat could have been clean out of Texas. Maybe so, maybe so. What's your opinion, Tig? I ain't got one. All I wanted to see that puma dead. That's all any of us want. Way high up in the glows, on the mountain tops, a lion picked the yearling's bones and licked his thankful chops. Not with that yell going on, he didn't. A lion picked the yearling's bones. It's a good thing ain't any of us yearlings, right, Mr. T? Cat tracks. Where he's traveling looks like he's favoring a paw. Well, ain't a man alive can see through rock. <clears throat> Broken, but I sure wish you'd listen to me before it tried what it tried. You'll have to stay here then. Now I can come along. Just give me time to cut myself a crutch. You stay put. We're not back by night. You build a fire. You're lucky, old timer. You could have broken your neck. Watch out for that cat. Animal like that can be sneaky. Like to get you from behind. Oh, what that all right? Don't deal. Wishbone hadn't showed up. You pulled the trigger? I don't know. You ever shoot a man in the back? No. Don't mean I wouldn't. Well, that's something to know.
Come on. Must be Goldie's lace. Hmm? Uh, you know how legends are in favor of kids, women, or men talk something up? After a while, everybody half accepts it and eventually believes it. Get to the point, Eagle. Well, the one who lives in there or is supposed to live there, they call him Goldie. To be alive, it must be over a century. Hard to believe, ain't it? Men live to be a hundred. What's in there you don't want to be in there? A whole lot, Mr. Favor. A man who lived a full century, is that enough? A man who brought his young bride up here and killed her. Because he found gold. And she wanted to use it. And he knew if she did, he'd lose it. A young man who wanted to help her spend it. Some people say I want Margarita for what she owns. And like the young man they say lives in there. I got gold of my own, in a sense. I can pay for anything she names, but she never named you. Now, well, that's up to her, ain't it? Nobody ever paid much attention to old gold in his legends, because uh, up here's the wrong place for gold veins. Pumatrex here, anyway. Let's go, Mr. Favor. I never believed in the stories about old Goldie anyway. Let's find out if he's real. You do strayed from the beaten trail, as used to be called. Not exactly. We're hunting for a puma. This one's a man killer. More power to him. Seen any sign of him around? I ain't got no quarrel with pumas. Got no quarrel with nothing. Ain't human. What's in there? No. Nobody goes in there. All we want is the cat, Goldie. What's in there belongs to me, understand? Why do you call me Goldie? It's stupid to call me Goldie. You and them other fellers, many years ago, there was no gold in there. She found that out. Then you won't let us in after the puma? Glad the puma got in there. He's a friend of mine. You think I'm so old I can't defend a friend of mine? He's just knocked out. Look around. Crazy old loon. You can stay here and keep an eye on him. I'll look to the cat. Well, both go. I don't like being shut in. I don't like it, but I'm gonna be the one who gets that puma. Been shut? Yeah. Deeper down there. Do you hear it? Is? Oh. Well, I guess we'll have to try to get across the same way the cat did. You might jump it. Yeah, not even the cat could get across that. 
Yeah, I've tried it. You might not get across. It'd be an accident. Ain't nobody say it wasn't. It'd be an accident. What made you so sure? And uh, what makes you so sure that it wouldn't be an accident? Two choices, ain't I? Watching you gone, coming back. All right then, Teagle. This is when you do it. You love a woman. You're so afraid you can't have her. You're ready to kill the first man who comes along, looks at her twice. All right then, this is when you do it. So far, they don't even look for me. You are ready? I got a step here. It's all for you. Here goes. You stay there all day, how am I gonna get across? He's gone as far as he can. Let me take him. I'll cover. Find out how deep this shaft is. Want to find out how good my aim is? It's no use in that light. We gotta wait till darkness. When it gets dark, you'll need a torch to get across, and that's all the light I need. So go on, get on with, move. Then stay there. You can't stand any longer. I got patience. I can wait longer than you can. If one of us could make it, could get dropped on that old loon. Hey, look, it's clear. Get back. Hey, you plan on spending the summer down there? This old Methuselah is, but he sure didn't want you out of there. Wishbone, didn't I tell you to stay put down below? You mighty well did. Don't you ever listen to anything I say? Well, aren't you glad I did? You mighty well told I am. Uh... What are we doing now? Huh? Yeah. Look him again. <sighs> See, so, old Tommy, you uh, look like you used some clothes. Don't look like you've had a meal in the last 10 years, either. If we get down below, we'll send you up some food stuff. Hey! 
You send anybody up here, I'll, I'll blow their brains out. Next town we hit, I'm going to get you the finest dog they got and send on back for you. Or... Mama, he is handsome. It was Miss Eagle who shot the Puma, though. Of the favor. You did return, but now? I'm behind my herd. Is it so important? Trail boss is no good for a woman and children. I've been through that once. Should the woman have something to say? Good luck on your drive, Miss Favor. Goodbye. Gracias. Go with God, ancient one. Don't you worry about me, child. Take a look in those saddlebags. My name's Pete. You mind telling us we're headed? Going to a town called Polo Tiempo. What for? Your yeah, business there. What kind of business? What's this all about, mister? I asked you what kind of business. Not until you tell me what this is all about. Well, just your that will ride 15, 20 miles east of here. The boss sent us to town to pick up express money. The boss sent two of you on one horse? No, we were caught in a rock slide. This one got lame. The other one broke his leg. We... He had to shoot. You said something about expense money. That's right. Supplies and stuff. So where did you expect to get this expense money? From the confectionery store. From the back, Mr. Payton. How do you know the bank's still standing? Stand You know anything about the fire? But you know the bank's still standing. Look, we don't know a thing Save about... Save your breath. He ain't gonna bleed you anyhow. Why not? Because it's not the truth? There's nothing in saddlebags, Mr. Payton. What did you expect to find? About $10,000. Stolen from the bank? No. Not from the bank. We can prove who we are and what we're doing. Look, shut up, will you? You are a real rough one, aren't you, mister? You got no call coming around to bracing us. That's for us to decide. Take that rifle on me, mister. Charlie, you double ride with one of these men. Will, you take the other. Look, I ain't riding nowhere. Hold on, Roddy. They're riding us into town. Beats hoofing it. Mister, you're coming with us. Now, you can come peaceably. Make trouble. But either way, you're coming with us. Anything yet? Nothing yet. But we're still looking. This might have been a town once, but sure ain't no more. Finest hot and growing country in Texas. It'll be done again. All right, come on. Mm -hmm. 
Submission. Mean anything to you? What are you getting at? Is there any reason why you don't want to go in? You lead the way, mister. You're the one who's trying to prove something. <laughs> Sister, we just brought these two men in. Are they men? You saw them when they grabbed him and ran off. You got a good look. Are these the ones? We've never seen them before, Mr. Payton. Never. Sorry to have troubled you. All right, get out of here, all of you. We can't go on like this, sister. We've got to tell them. But who can we tell? I suppose we can't. You know we can't. All right. You didn't steal the money. It means you didn't do the other thing. You're free to go. What other thing? Murder a priest? That's one thing they might have told us before. We've been on their side. Yeah. Well, looky yonder. Wouldn't you know it? First thing they rebuild is a soap. Come on. Whoa. What do you mean, whoa? We got two things to do in this town. That's pick up money and... Get some remounts and get back to the herd. I know. Well, why don't you see if you can pick us up a couple horses? Well, take money. Well, so we came here to get it, isn't it? This horse ought to be worth something to trade. I'm going over to the bank. I'll meet you later. Yeah, this one's lame. All a little rest. He'll be all right. I'd like to swap you him and give you something to boot for two sound ones. Here. Be three or four weeks before he can be rode. I know. Well, I don't have no horses. Says livery stable. Thought you had a fell out in back somewhere. Oh, I had horses, all right. All of them in there. Every the last one gone the fire. Must be mighty bad. Yeah. Middle of the night. Like seeing your own family burning. Never heard no screaming like it. Well, anybody else have horses? You won't find any horses in this town for sale. We need everyone got left. I'll even buy that one off you. Well, that won't do us no good unless we get something to ride. We gotta hook up with our outfit. Well, where's your outfit? Cattle drive, 20 miles from here. More by now. Moving north? Yeah. Well, you best take the stage out here. Stage? Yeah, a line run between here and Blainesville. That's 50 miles northwest. You could pick up horses there. Get what you came for. Yeah, they had enough money in the bank for Mr. Favor's draft. Oh, uh, we owe anything here? Just ain't no horses to be had, unless we reach town 50 miles from here. Who says? Livery man. 50 miles sounds kind of crazy to me. No more than us walking back to the herd. The man says we can reach that town by stage. Yep. 
Coach pulls out in the morning. You want to buy our horse, sir? I'm going to need some care. About $15, how I can go. That's fair enough, considering everything, I guess. Don't want to sell the saddles, do you? Well, them saddles ain't in late, but they're good working saddles. Ought to be worth a few dollars. Well, we'll keep saddles. What I want to know is who'd want to kill a priest? Bad thing. Real good man. There is cotton here, plantings everything. The whole crop was in that storehouse when it burned. Now, Father Sebastian, he went out to other places and raised money to buy seed to keep us going. Went all over, talked to many new. Night he got back, him and that money disappeared. Two men, the nuns over at Mission, saw it. They grabbed him and yanked him away. It was a shot. Well, now, Father Sebastian, he's the kind of man that turn up if a shot had missed. Well, uh, I'll need a bill of sale on that horse. All right. We'll fix it up with the saloon. Have a drink on it. All right, hold right there. Sebastian, are you all right? I'm fine. Sleeping on this hard pallet? The harder, better, so I've heard. Maybe you tell me now. Who were those two men that you didn't know? We told you the truth. We didn't know them. Those men were brought to us as suspects. What'd you say? Well, what was they say? We'd never seen them before. But they wait. They'll go away and stop. I want you two to come down here. They went away. We're being very careful that no one learns about this place. All it means is the Padre's lie. Sisters. Do as I say. Go to Mr. Payton and the others and tell them about this. Father, Father, we don't mean to disobey you, Father, but we can't do it. Go and tell them. Please forgive us for your sake. That's right, for his sake. I'll ask you again. How long do you think you're going to get away with this? The town is blocked off everywhere. How can you get out? <laughs> he won't mention money. I'll mention it. How are we going to get the money out of here? That's real easy to me. We're not going to take it out. They are. We? You and her. The saints be with you. You think you can rely on the sisters? They like you. Suppose we put it up to them. We can't do it. Or you mean you don't care what happens to the Padre? I wouldn't think you did. According to you, no. According to me, there's no choice. Sisters, you, your work is upstairs. You, you are needed there. They can get somebody else to do the work. There's plenty of women in this town. All the sisters have got to say is they're tired of something. Yes, they can take care of things until we return. No. Oh, Father, we've got to do as the men say. Sister Francis, the town isn't a town anymore, and, and we have lost the money. We can start over. We can't lose you. Well, what do you want us to do? You take this bag, Plainsville, both of you. As simple as that. No hardship. When you get there, you go to the hotel. There'll be a man waiting for you, a man named Carter. You give him the bag. Father Sebastian. As soon as Carter gets the bag, he'll tell Grandpa's here. It's something. One of the few buildings that escaped the fire. The telegraph office. Ain't that something? As soon as we have him, Carl, we'll turn the Padre loose. Understand? Sisters, you stay here. We got no other choice, Father. You're going or not? Yes. Yes, we're going. Sister Francis, Sister Joan, I order you not to. Father, we're not disobeying, but you must go on living. Whether what we do seems wrong to you or not, please forgive us. Just a minute. We'll keep the money. The stage doesn't leave till morning. Hey, 
I, I didn't know you was leaving town, Emma. It's a dull town, Miss Swanson. Couldn't get that roulette wheel to do what you wanted it to, huh? That's right. We're gonna miss you. I'm sure you are. I mean it. You take care of yourself here. Don't ever worry about me. Dance hole or not, that's a mighty pretty girl. going to be a long ride. Yes. Yes, it will be. I expect we should get acquainted. Yes, I expect we should. I'm Emma Carney. I'm Sister Frances. And this is Sister Joan. I felt kind of funny when I saw you in here. I got the feeling maybe you weren't going to approve of me. That's odd. I somehow got the feeling that you might not approve us. Well, bless you both. What I mean is, I think we'll get along fine. Yes, I'm sure we will. Hey, I've been wondering how those gals are going to get along. Yeah, well, why wouldn't they? They're all gals, ain't they? So to speak. Well, are you ready to get started? Yeah, wait for the sign painter. About time he shows up. Uh, let me see that, please. What do you have in that bag, sister? You may look inside, Mr. Aiden. Sorry? All right, come on. Come on what? Get out and bring your saddle with you. What for? You know we're not letting anyone leave town without searching them first. You try searching me. Are you going to get out by yourself, or do you want my assistance? I'm staying right here. You can take this. you're doing, Peyton, wringing a chicken's neck. Handle those things carefully. I just launder them. Here. What kept you from dropping it on the ground? I'm sorry. Don't say you're sorry. Just don't say anything. I want to hate you with a clear conscience. Men, you don't know how well you are without them. All right. It's all right. Here, I'll take the case. All right, you boys come on board now. Can I have that bag? Put it in the bag. Searched everybody on the coach, but the sisters. What I figured. Now it's my turn to get some fresh air. Meet you upstairs in five minutes. It's all our time taking the saddle of horses. Saddle of horses? You figure going to walk in the Blainsville? You want to miss the sisters at all? You told them to give money to somebody named Carter. You think I'm playing tricks? Who else is in this with us? You know that about a name Carter? Why'd you tell them there was? What if they start asking around for somebody named Carter? We'll be there. But you told them we were staying here, letting the father go, and we get the telegraph. I told them, but I had to tell them. 
we're gonna get there before they get there, we'd better get started. I told you I was gonna settle the horses. What if we have any trouble getting out of here? We'll get out. As long as we love searches. As long as we don't have the money. He'll be able to tell everybody what we look like. You saw the horses. Baby, does he? Baby bulldog. Is it, uh, is it all right? Is what all right? Is it all right to speak? I've been wondering why you've been so silent all this while. Have you? Yes. And um, yes, I think I have. I'm sure she has. I'm sure she has, too. You ladies care for drink, though. No, nothing. Nothing. What's in it? Plain water, ma'am. Save it. We may have to wash later. What did you want to speak about, Mr. Hughes? Well, I want to thank you, ma'am, for helping Jim and me out of that mess. I want to thank you, too. He only told the truth. Well, sometimes the truth's hard to come by when Ann needs it the most. Is that bad? Well, it's more of a nuisance than anything else. May I help you? Sister. Practically a diamond hitch, ma'am. You ladies must learn a lot in your work. I've known how to tie badges since I was a little girl. I was brought up on a ranch with my four brothers. Where was that? Southwest Texas. Well, that's my country. What was your name then? You don't mind me asking. Conroy. Conroy? I've heard my pa, Dan, Dan Yates. I've heard him speak of the Conroys. Gee, I probably would have met you before, but I went into the war when I was 16. Say, wasn't your family hit pretty hard in that Comanche raid? Yes, I lost two of my brothers. That's how I met Sister Francis. Some of them were taken to the church sanctuary. Father Sebastian. You're the wheel, Sergeant. She's froze up. Feel to go inside. I tell you, you're working for a new line. All fine equipment. Yeah, and good men take care of it. Why do you carry any grease? I am, and it's one of them lunkheads forgot to hang the bucket. You're gonna have to work this wheel loose before it'll do any good. Unhook the tea, Jeff. Nothing like breaking down in the middle of nowhere. Oh, it's taking them long enough. Getting that wheel off is hard. I don't know how you stand in those clothes you wear. You don't think I do. 
Come to think of it, I don't know why you girls ever let yourself in for a life like that. Ever feel sorry about it? Sorry? Good-looking kid like you. Ever wish you could back out? Back out? From what are you doing, being nun? Sister. Well, I still have that choice. Oh, yeah? You see, I haven't taken my final vows yet. Oh? Maybe you're not so sure you want to stay in. Why do you say that? Where well, you've been looking at that rover. Can't say as I blame you. He sure got a lot of play. Something wrong with that plan. It's no ten miles to the relay station. The wheel stays on, we'll make it. Oh, let's get it off the jack. Ladies, ready to go. Thank you, Drover Boy. Ever so much, Drover Boy. Take a stop over for repairs. Might be a little while, so best you ladies go inside. Let me help you with that, ma'am. This isn't so bad. We have to spend the night. Us girls can be real cozy here. Spend the night? But we have no time for that. Men sound real discouraged about the coach. It ain't the wheel. It's the axle. It bent. We'll have to take her off, put some heat on, to straighten her up. Uh, I guess I better tell the passenger. Ladies, I'm sorry, but it looks like we're going to have to lay over till morning. Well, we can't do that. We must go straight through to Blainesville. Believe me, ma'am, it can't be helped. We've got to fix the coach. Ben says you ladies can have the cabin for the night. But we can't wait that long. Is there a, is there a buggy we can hire or, or anything? Ben, can you help? Well, there's a buckboard, I guess, you could use. But it's more than 25 miles from here to Blainesville, ma'am. Yeah, sister, and you don't want to go alone like that. Oh, but I'm afraid we must. Yeah, let one of us go with you. Oh, please, you must let me do this my way. Well, there's a rig I, I get accept for it. Oh, thank you. Jim? This wagon will be returned. I ain't worried about that, ma'am. Too late, it bothers me. Sure you want to do this? Yes. 
Yes, we'll be all right. can't have it. It doesn't belong to you. What I mean? No, you can have it. Come on, give me that. We, we want to thank you. You'll have to uh, run into some more of this. I think you better let me drive back. The coach will be ready in a few hours. We're all working on it. Well, all right. I'll sit in the back chair, please. from Pope Temple says your priest is dead. selfish, too. I'm thinking about my own life. That isn't selfish. I'm afraid, sister. I've been afraid for a long time. Yes, yes, I know. I don't feel I can go through with it. I don't feel I belong. And now that it's too late to help Father Sebastian... Well, we must still finish our journey. Father would have wanted that. You'll take the money to Blainsville, where it'll be safe. And then... Joan, I'm sure most of us felt the same way you do. Deeply humble, fearful of taking the final step. Not you. It's even now, about many things. Not you, sister. What do you think we are, Joan? We all doubt ourselves. We all feel unworthy. And why? What is there in it for any of you? Helping others? Exp 
expressing our faith and devotion in sacrifice. This makes us feel worthwhile. This renews our own strength. I don't have that in me. Oh, yes, but you do. The need to serve is very strong in you, Joan. And you must respond to it for peace of mind and fulfillment. For you is the true happiness. I made up my mind, sister. I'm not taking my final vow. She's all yours, ready to roll. I'll tell the women. Yeah, you have a kind of a man, all right. Kind of what? Kind of man a woman would make a fool of herself over. What are you talking about? That pretty young nun. She's not going to take her final vows just because of you. Have you been drinking? I have not. It makes sense, will you? Oh, I'm making all kinds of sense. That girl. She's not in with the rest of those church women yet. Not all the way. She hasn't given her final word, and now she's not going to. Well, what's that got to do with me? You and her come from the same part of Texas, don't you? Yeah. You're the good-looking boy from home. She saw the likes of you, and that was it. You always go around talking like this? Oh, I'm a gossipy, middlesome female. You know any warrant? Yeah, those two in there. Sister, um, I don't want you to think I've been making any trouble for you, not on purpose anyway. Trouble? Yeah, I, well, what I mean is I have the greatest respect for you ladies, all of you. I don't want you thinking I'm trying to be fancy or anything. Fancy? Oh, oh have you been talking to that girl, Emerald? Yeah, she told me that Sister Joan was going to quit your outfit on account of me. Oh, please believe me. Sister Joan has all the qualities needed to become a dedicated nun. But leaving us or staying with us, it's her decision. Hers alone, you had nothing to do with it. Oh, I'm sure glad you said that. I, I didn't think there was anything wrong with me talking to her about her kinfolk. No. No, of course not. Perhaps... Perhaps you become a symbol to Sister Joan. Your image is part of a world that she used to know. You've been very helpful, very strong. This might affect her decision, but whatever the outcome, it's no fault of yours. We're all waiting for you. Why don't you and me uh, sit together the rest, Sister? Huh? Come on. Hey, Jeff. Drop bag of tools there, painters. <clears throat> oh, Ben, give this to the painter when he gets back. Give this to him, too. Be a good chance for you and me to get acquainted. Kind of a new idea on your part, isn't it? Yeah. That's the way it goes. I saw you standing in that doorway and you look mighty pretty. Uh -huh.
your legs, folks. Stop and water the horses. Come here, ma'am. What are you trying to prove, playing up to that girl? Oh, we're just having them fun. She don't think so. Not while that hogwash here give her. She knows I don't mean it. Well, maybe not at first. But the last two hours now, she's been looking it up. I'm older than you, Rowdy, and I know what I'm talking about. If you ain't careful, you're going to be neck deep in women trouble. I can take care of myself. I hope so. I hope that girl isn't going to be hurt by what he's doing. Hmm? Huh? Those two out there. Haven't you noticed? No. He's been paying a lot of attention to her. Sister. Yes. Did you mean it when you said you were fearful and uncertain about taking the final vows? I felt just as you do. Yes. Mr. Yates. Yeah. How much farther would you say we had to go? Oh, I'd say around five miles or so. Oh. I wanted to tell you, ma'am, about uh, Admiral Denis. Oh? We got engaged. Engaged? Yeah, I asked her and she said, yeah. So you're gonna be all right when you get Blainsville? After you leave the coach and all? You're thinking about the money? We're taking it straight to the bank. I don't believe there'll be any trouble now. Change the plans. Word just came through about the priest being shot. It's all the town. Nuns might find out about it before they get to the hotel. So eat them just as soon as they step on the stage. That's right. Step out one time. Men first. Come on, move. Get up. All right, move. Turn the back to me. That's it. You're behaving real nice. Come on. All right, ladies, move. Get out of there. Okay, go. Get the bag. The minute. All right, where is it? That money belongs to God. Where is it? I'll never tell you. Ain't in here. Now listen, lady. Oh. I know where it is. You got it on you. You took it out of that bag, catch it in them clothes of yours. Is that right, sister? They're women, Coley. Church women. Not much we can do about it. But you can. 
You didn't have to take money off of her. I wouldn't do anything to you. Black stubborn, you won't like what I'll do to your face. Haven't you done enough? Get in there. You next. Come on, come on. Search her. Those are the men that murdered Father Sebastian. Which ones? That man. And this one. All right, a couple of you men take it. Let's get in. Take it. Come on. Go on, untie. I've been thanking God for his help. Now I want to thank you for helping God. Well, I was glad to help him, ma'am. Can I help? Thank you, but the driver will take him somewhere he can rest. Oh, I'd like to talk to you. You all right now? Yes. All he needs is a good stiff drink. Go on, Jeff. What was it you want to talk to me about? I'm deeply touched by what you're trying to do, but it's unnecessary. Oh, well, what am I trying to do? But taking the veil is a final and irrevocable decision. We're all mortal. Even the rest of us have our weaknesses. And when we're facing the sacred moment, we we'll tend to hesitate and falter. Yeah, I guess so. I finally overcome my self-doubts. And I told Sister Frances that I was ready to take my final vows. I'm, I'm glad for you. That man was hurt and needed my help. A little while ago, you needed help, too. Sure, well, I understand. I hope you didn't think that, uh, well, what I mean is, uh, I understand why your sisters uh, help, because, uh, well, sisters are great helpers. I'm grateful that you spare me from having to spell it out for you. What about your engagement? Well, you don't have to worry about Emerald. She understands I didn't really mean it. Does she? Emerald, there's a... Well, there's something I, I want you to have. $50? Yeah, well, you've been real good about this whole thing, and, well, I, I wanted you to have it. Look, Rowdy, it was fun. I don't want to be paid for it. See you around sometime. So long. God bless you. Goodbye. We'll say goodbye now. And thank you. Goodbye. Uh, there go two real fine people. You bet. There goes another one.
Talking about how you need a bath. What day is this? It's Friday. What? Who ever heard of anybody taking a bath on Friday? I think I'll just wait until the day the good Lord intended me to. <laughs> you find any worms? How long do you think we'll be here, Mr. Roddy? Uh, I know much. We're a good week ahead of schedule. Got plenty of grass here. Might as well fatten them up a bit. You know, it don't seem normal, Ruddy. Have grass, good weather, no hurry, nothing wrong. I don't know. Well, I'm short a man, Quince. Maybe you can find a man out here in the middle of nowhere. Good morning. That's been that way since sunup. Saw you heard about a quarter of my back. Figured there must be fresh water around. I ran out a day or two ago. Go ahead, help yourself. Boss, the ramrod, Roddy Yates. Hey, don't we know each other from somewhere? Could be. John Shepard. Colonel, don't you remember me? I was with you in the summer of 61. I, I was private Yates then. You're my prisoner in Arizona. Shepard? Rock Chancellorville? I was a Chancellorville. What was a cylinder doing way out in Yuma? I was visiting friends in the Arizona Territory. When the fighting started, they Gates and me and Irons. That's the first we knew there was a war on. Yeah, that happened to a lot of us then. Why'd you get out of Yuma, Mr. Shepard? He took a broomstick and carved gun, bluffed his way past half the garrison. Bad luck, I'm afraid. Whatever it was, pleasure to know you, Colonel. Jim Quince. Quince. Say, uh, Colonel, the way you used to talk about Virginia all the time, I'm surprised to see you this far west. A man's got to make a living. The way I feel about the North, I'm not about to start making it up there. Could you say you could use another hand when he heard? We well, he news you. Hey, Gerard! I ain't enough coffee for one cup, Quince. I got here first, Shovel. Not gone one thing about you. You're a dependable cuss. I ain't never heard you say a polite word to yet. Well, listen for one. Well, down to that shell and come on, meet great man. Might do you some good. Good man. Colonel John Shepard. He was a commander that held Chancellorville. I know him better than you do. Well, come on, man. I wouldn't spit on his shoes. I beat my way across Arkansas. Got down to New Orleans. From there, I caught a boat to Atlanta. Joined up there with Jen Lee. How come you didn't bust out, Mr. Rowdy? Born as broomsticks. <laughs> No, oh, I just couldn't give up that fine prison food. <laughs> it's in your favor. Oh, 
this is your boss. Bienvenidos, señores. Hey, ¿qué pasa? Está bien, señor. ¿Y tú? Oh, don't ask. We ran into some bad news. Screaming for beef up north. There's supposed to be three big herds pushing up behind us. No more laying around lakes. We'll take everything we got to stay ahead. And I have some good news, señor. We found a new drover. Here? It was the first accident, just luck. There he is with Senor Rowley. His name is Shepard. His name is what? John Shepard. You know him? Yeah, but not as John Shepard. What? Well, a new man. So I heard. This is uh, Colonel John Shepard, Mr. Favor. Aye. Howdy. Oh, this here's Clay Forrester, Colonel. Hello, Rankin. Rankin? That's the name he used uh, up in the Dakotas. You know? Uh, by reputation and smell. He's a bounty hunter. Bounty? What, what are you talking about? I've known him for a long time. His name's John Shepard. Am I wrong, mister? Right is right. I was in Deadwood the night you shot the Pecos kid in the back. How much did you make on the kid? The same amount you'd have made if you'd had guts to take him. Pardon me while I go get sick. And for once, worse, it isn't because of your cooking. Bounty hunter? Bounty eights? You feel like getting sick, too? Well, I just don't understand why. Because I don't tire my back picking rags. Is that really acceptable to you? If I was a rag picker, I'd take that as an insult. Would you now? Somebody had a slap a brand on his face so as everybody recognize him. Who wants to start heating the iron, you? You? Fat mouth. What about the rest of you? Maybe you want to help cleanse me of my sins? You're all so righteous looking, we ought to start a new religion. Call it gospel according to Saint Drover. Find something amusing, Trail Boss? Well, uh, let's say I recognize the group portrait. You got a kind to make on my occupation? Not unless you got one to make on mine. Franken, or Shepard, or whatever you're calling yourself these days. You're just bummed to start a conversation with that big fat mouth of yours, aren't you? Franken, I don't like your kind. I never have. What kind am I? You're a murderer. I wouldn't talk about murderers if I were Forrester. I never killed a man because I got panicky because I was careless and as I got drunk. Man had a price on his head. I brought him in the same as any of the rest of you would have done. You weren't shaking too bad. Pull the trigger. Just for record, the last man I hunted down was the Pecos kid six months ago. I'm through with all that. Since then, I've been looking for work. That's why I'm here, to work at Bunton Cattle. We move out at Scent, you'll ride drag. He's a bounty hunter. He's worse than that. It's an animal, without any feelings, without any inside. You're on. There's a couple of hoods on our trail. I want you to backtrack, find out how many and how close. Now? Now. We're going to be working together even after all, Yates.
There's how in the world do you figure a man like that anyway? Rock at Chancellorsville. What happened? What happened to make him give up bounty? Well, who said he quit except him? If he hasn't quit, that brings up a mighty interesting question. Who's he after? What's the matter? They're struggling like a clothesline. Still seem to want to move. Look on drag, Sir Shepard. Quinn, Scarlett, and Jenkins? Doing back there. Imagine they're afraid of getting their backs to me. Oh, Lord. You can hold down this section all by yourself? Yeah, any injections? Oh, no, you're doing fine. You didn't hear me when I said we're going to pick up this snail's pace? Well, we've been doing a little talk, Mr. Perry. You've been doing a little. Uh, that explains it. I wondered what you've been doing. You sure ain't gonna working. Mr. Favor, we want you to get rid of Shepard. Want what? We want you to get rid of him. Oh, I heard, I heard. We don't have to work with murderers. Well, too squeamish to shake his hand when he first met in the camp. No, I never closed my eyes all night on account of him. Oh, all right, all right. Now, suppose he is still collecting bounty. You got a price on your head, Jim? No. Scarlet? Nope. No. Well, just the same, you ought to get rid of him. What for? He's the only man in the whole drive who's pulling his weight. Anything more to say? I guess not. Shepard's still hunting? Well, I ain't seen him shoot nobody yet. He didn't have much of a chance to jump one of our men. He'd have the whole crew on him. Well, I'll ask you the same question I asked them. Figure you got a bunny in your head? Who knows? Everybody's got something in their past they're ashamed of. Well, then, who are you to judge him? Nobody. You give a plug nickel what a man's done before I hire him. As long as he does the job, it's good enough for me. Shepard does a good job. Well, I agree, but you're still gonna have trouble with the men. And we'll give trouble right back. Deluxe service? Can't let a man starve, any man. Set down and get out. Take it back, there are some I bet starve. Codmouth bite that fellow. The poor snake had blow up and die. Well, you said the same thing about Gerard yesterday, with one. Come to think about it, though, they're two of a kind. Anybody know anything about Senor Gerard? He worked? He came from? No, no. no. I sure don't. You know, talking about Gerard, a kind of funny thing happened yesterday. I was down the lake and Gerard come by. He didn't see me, but he looked all around and he threw something in the water. Probably a couple of wishbones biscuits. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. Why don't you go on the stage? Well? Well, it didn't sink right away. So you fished it out. No, it was floating right there in front of me. 
Well, come on, what was it? It was an undershirt. A what? Yeah, an undershirt with the name Graceman printed across the back of it. Graceman? What Graceman? It's a prison just outside there. Well, that's why Gerard almost jumped out of his skin when he saw Shepard yesterday. Sure. He knows him all right. He knows the name of Rankin of the Dakotas. You figure he escaped? Maybe he's the one Shepard's after. Now, he is. Why didn't Shepard follow himself? Maybe he's waiting for a better time. One thing's sure, nobody could be as mean as Gerard without his hiding something. Something in his past, Mr. Wishbone? Yes, yeah, something in his past. Like the time when you poisoned all them people. What's this? What are you talking about? Well, that, that time in Missouri when you poisoned that whole farm full of men. I never did. Now, where did you hear that? Well, you told me in your sleep last night. And you listened? Well, you keep shaking me awake to tell me all over again, Mr. Wishbone. Wait a minute, Wishbone. Poisoned the whole farm? Well, nobody died. At least I don't think so. I was younger than mushy and it was my first cooking job. Well, I thought I'd give everybody a treat, so I went out and picked a whole bucket full of mushrooms. At least I thought there's mushrooms. Anyway. I took off and never went back. Well, if uh, somebody did die, it could be an old poster out on you. All right, let's face it. It could be a poster out on any one of us. There's no poster on me. Oh, come off it, Clay. You could have liquored up and wiped out whole town. Well, I have even, even if you ain't. Pack of us tore up a saloon down on the Rio Grande and left two dead. At least that's what they say. You mean you don't know? Nope. It's too full to die. Maybe confession's what we need. Anybody else? Gentlemen. Working Kittredge. Then you're better off too, I think. Well, maybe that's who he was drawn on. Did you see him telling him? I told you I was through with that business. Uh-huh. We heard. Cowboy, if I had a conscience as black as yours, I'd put a butt in my brain. There's nothing wrong with my conscience, mister. Nothing? That was a fair fight. What was? I told you that big fat mouth of yours would get you in trouble. What fight? A wrangler up in Montana. Try to take a girl away from me, I killed him. There were some posters out of me for a couple of months, till I cleared myself. And that you can't pull all back. Well, if you're all cleared... He's not gonna take the time to check on that. I don't intend to stand around till he puts a bullet in my back. Stop that gun, mister. You wanna draw on me? Put it on!
I'm strapped, oh boy. Shepard! Bad policy, feeling like that, trail boss. You almost lost yourself a scout. What's it all about? Well, Mr. Clay told Mr. Shepard to strap on his gun. No. You really that time of it? It's a private fight. We got no time for fights, private or public. All right, let's break. Go on. Well, there's still some coffee. Anybody want any? And now it starts. <laughs> I never even seen his hand move. That gun just seemed to jump out off myself. You're lucky Mr. Favor stopped it, Clay. It's not stopped. It's just delayed. What makes you so sure it's you he's after? Oh, it's me, all right. Well, hold on there. Wishbone may have a point there. In fact, uh, he could have seen an old poster on me, too. I was um, in the Oklahoma Territory playing poker, and this fella dropped the fifth days. Beat him up pretty bad. He could have died, I don't know. Well, I helped you, remember that? That's right. My scene, I think, was the worst of all. Yours? See, I was working on a rancho in Texas. There's a horse the throne said nobody was to ride to what? But I took him out in the morning when I thought I was alone. The baton had a little girl, six years old. She ran up. And the horse, I, I said the horse had gotten out by himself. But maybe the patron knew I was lying. Jenkins? Yeah, it happened back in Dodge about six, seven years ago. I was drunk, slipping off in a flop house. I felt somebody trying to steal my boots, so I hit him with a bottle. What did you? Did kill him? I don't know. I didn't stick around to find out. See, that's what I mean. Isn't any one of us in the clear? Maybe not. But it's me he's been baiting. Me he wants. Three hands in, and the worst part of the drive still ahead. Well, I'll get after him. What for? We can't spare him. What are you going to do? Chain him to the herd? Mr. Faber? Hmm? Wasn't Burke going to stand the night watch? Yeah, him and Kittredge. Who's going to take his place? Uh, me and one of the other ones that left, Fedorov. If you don't mind, all the same, you I'd like to take Fedorov's place. You need to go martyred on me, Shepard. They quit whether you'd come along or not. You know, didn't that? Who's your place? Unless you're afraid to be a lonely, Ramrod. I get my gear. Quiet. Well, they're tired. It's only about pushing them hard. They sleep good. There's the opposite of men. Remember once a chance, Bill? May. Night about like this. The army half dead on its feet. And nobody was sleeping. Well, they had more to think about. That's one about these cattle. Ain't got much to fret up. Uh, well, well, well. You still alive, Roddy? Still alive? I don't know, Shepard. You're turning into a big disappointment to my men. But I'm determined you're a big time killer and you ain't doing nothing to prove it. Maybe I'll just start running around with a knife to him, my tease. Hey, now that might help. Seriously, how big a blow is it to the drive losing three men like that? Oh, we'll see about it. Maybe I'll cut out before you lose more. There's a town just north of here. You could ride in with me and pick up your replacements. Hey, now, you trying to get me on? You're too quick, Miss Favor. Besides, I thought you needed the job. Was, yeah. Well, uh, the men. Uh... And what about him? You getting in trouble? Yeah. See what I mean? It's best I quit. 
I didn't say nothing about quitting. First thing you two know, you'll be sitting out here all alone with nobody to talk to but me and 3,000 cows. Why don't you be sensible? Look, Shepard, nobody tells me how to run my drive. Not you, not them. I'll see you in the morning. Strong man. Good stunned streak. Yeah, well, you got a stubborn streak to run this outfit. Sometimes a stubborn streak keeps you going. It's good for a man. When he runs out of pious expressions like patriotism, goodness, piety. It's none of my business, Colonel. Then why don't you keep your mouth shut? Yeah, you're probably right. Gates. Sometimes I talk a little sharper than I tend to. I guess that's new to you, Sinjuma. Yeah. Maybe that's what comes of losing a war. I'm still curious about one thing. Yates. What happened, Colonel? What happened where? I've done nothing I'm ashamed of. Don't you? I told you I don't pick rags. There's dirtier ways of making a living. Living, that's a key word, Yates. Living. I was born owning 1,200 of the finest acres in Virginia. Fields, barns. I lost all that with the war. That's what happened. I lost it. But I'll get back. I don't care what the price. They took your life? They took everything. They burned every stick, every leaf of tobacco. They killed my wife. Oh. You want to know what the real nightmare is, Yates? You know who killed Ali? The Southerners, the deserters. Buried her up on the hill where the house used to be. Now I can't even put flowers on her grave. I buy the land back. I see. But don't you strain your eyes about it like you said yourself. It's none of your business. No, it isn't, Colonel. And it's a complex number, Yates. Yeah, you're right. And well enough to murder for a living and complex enough to quit when he knows wrong. Well, Mr. Faber was right. We'll stick with you if we have to drive these moss horns to Kansas by ourselves. Murderers like to do a little cattle rustling on the side now and then. Well, fine. Let's take them back in. Soup's on. Yeah, with you? Nope. All alone, Mr. Favor? All alone? How's your big chance? 
Most of the room. There's one about 20 miles back, but it ain't fast and ain't big. That should teach you a lesson, Mr. Faber, not to anticipate trouble. Hey, you go on back and eat, you right? We can take these strays here. You think you'd be safe with me? If he don't turn his back. Come on. Back to camp. Now what? Clay's trying to take over the herd. On account of me? Yep. I couldn't join him, senor boss. No matter how I feel against this man. Which one's putting up an argument, but they ain't doing too much good. All right, let's go. What about the strays? Leave him. <laughs> No, but it won't be long. Well, Wish, you made up your mind? Yep. For or against? Against? Wish, what's come over you? You were the one who's yelling the loudest about Shepard. About Shepard, but not against Mr. Faber. Look, Wish, all we want him to do is send Shepard away. That's all. Oh, that's an awful lot. That's like saying, all right, Mr. Faber, you be boss and we'll tell you what to do. It's Shepard or it's me or any one of us. And I'm not a runaway now and out of my time of life. All right, you just start pushing Gil Favor too far, and you might find out you can't run. Now, if he wants to start a fight, we'll have to finish it. Well, let's not be too sure. He isn't just exactly alone, you know. He's got Rowdy and Shepard and Jesus and me. That's five. Six, Mr. Wishbone. Six. Six against eleven. Ten. Batten isn't on anybody's side. I'll be the audience. I'll sit back and applaud. I want to tell you one thing, Gerard. If I thought for one minute you're the one worth protecting, I'd throw you to Shepard's a bastard curl your hair. I'm sorry to disappoint you, Quince. I'm as clean as a newborn babe. New from where? Graceman prison? Clay, suppose he is the one. Suppose you're right busted out of Graceman. I was parole. Be some joke, wouldn't it? Us getting in a gut fight to save Gerard's skin. He don't want me. If he does, it's a, it's a mistake. Yeah. Well, it might be. Is that half of what we've been afraid of? Did that bounty hunter kill his man before we could get him into court? What if there is some mistake? Now we can make him promise to take Gerard right in alive. Ain't nobody taking me nowhere. Shepard, the ride your man. I said nobody ain't taking nowhere. Now hold on now, Gerard. Look, hold it, will you? Put the gun down.
me see. Let me see. How's it going? I've seen a lot worse. Yeah, I couldn't need enough. There you go. Marcy! Grab some of the shirts in the back of the wagon. I'll take care of it. You two get out the herd. Check them and try and keep them bunched. You know, we're throwing you handle a knife better than most army surgeons, I remember. Yeah, I found some carbon for too many empty belly boobers. How's it look? Well, he's gonna live. He ain't gonna do much good for a while. By the way, Shepard, was Gerard your man? Nope. He knew you. He sure the reason he was a guest at Grisman for a few years. He was my eighth bounty. Pretty good price, too. Mr. Favor, Mr. Hastu says we need help. That shot got the cut off, old jumpy. All right. Wish you come on with us. Shepard, you still karate. Wagon. Shepard, I... I believed you. Last lesson in life, yes. Don't believe in anything. I thought you'd lie. According to a sheriff up in Cavius County. Yeah, well, that sheriff must be crazy. He must be twice as crazy thinking you can take Mr. Favor in. I need that 2,000 awful bad. Not brave you ain't. Up. Probably the best thing. Sometimes the paint or wound like that drive a man clear out of his mind. Yeah. Good to see you, bud. We'll see about you, Mr. Faber. Oh, well, well, well. Oh, is this what Roddy was trying to tell me about? That's right. Matter there ain't a word of truth in that? Never heard of one man say anything different. Not true. Cornelius County, where's that? East of here, where is? Man came from there. His brother's sheriff. His brother's putting the ward up out of his own pocket. Standard. Standard. Over in one of your crews. Last season? Could be. Standard? Oh, Tom Standard? Sounds like the name he gave you. Hmm. Ah. Just drop it. Belt. I come over way. Should make 
making a personal thing of him? Yeah, sure he is. <laughs> Funny thing is I didn't kill him. Did my best to save him. I was crossing the river. Gurn knocked him off his horse by the time I got to him. Drowned. Don't believe it? What does it matter? Well, if I'm telling the truth, it's wrong, ain't it? I'm paid to bring a man in, not judge his crime. No, a man that uh, ain't got the sense to judge right from wrong. Weigh the facts in the case. He ain't much of a man. Right or wrong's a matter of opinion. You know how much you mean to me? You said 2,000? More than that. It's my last entry in the bank book. After this, I go to a courthouse outside Richmond. And I buy back my land. Stop filling? Any of you. Though I might buy some foxes. So you'd figure to go from killer to gentleman just by changing the address? I never was a murderer. A matter of opinion again. Not a matter of opinion, it's a fact. I shot the biggest kid like to shoot a mad dog. The last three men I brought in, I brought in live. Maybe you're not up to killing anymore, even when you got to. I wouldn't count on that favor if I were you. Well, you had me alone in the gully, why didn't you shoot then? A lot easier taking me in, slung a cross saddle than sitting it. Gerard came along. And you couldn't shoot him? It's strange. Seems like you're getting sick of the killing, and yet you sow it like green wherever you go. Sow it? Clay and the others are most likely going to kill Gerard. It's not my business. Yes, it is yours. You started them off. Now, they want to give you Gerard like a present so you get off the backs. You turn them into bounty hunters. How do you like that? They're grown men. They know what they're doing. Well, they can. They're prejudging just like you. Now, there's a difference. They're outside the law I met. They're after man because he's cold and mean. He's different. They don't like that. But there's injustice to their chase. Oh, there isn't yours. You know, I could shoot you now and say you try to resist arrest. But if you want to give me a word, you won't try to escape. Nope. Hey, why don't you think this thing through? Use some common sense. Go back up, talk to that shit, tell him how the man was killed. Would he go to trouble of rounding up witnesses, or would there just be a lynching some dark night? You might hire me to round up some witnesses. You ain't got time. You're going back to plantation. Right now, I ain't either. I got a hurt to sell. As soon as I get it sold, I'll take my witnesses and back and see Standard on my own. Time's passing favor. I ain't got it waste. I suppose not. Get on your horse. Oh. Hmm? Look, Trip Boss, whatever friendship there was between us, don't count on it anymore. I ain't count on friendship. Just common sense. Move. Do what? A lynch? Oh, I might as well stay here and take my chances. Time's up, Shepard. Here comes your present, huh? Right and ready. What the devil's... That's just enough, Forrester. What's going on? What does it look like? Treat the wrong possum. You mean it's you he wants me to favor? Seems like. You ain't done nothing. Well, that makes Gerard and me even, don't it, Jim? Gerard's clean. He's already paid for what he did. What about you, Jim? Untie him. Get down, Gerard. I'm real sorry. I Forget it. I guess I did come to me. Maybe I didn't. It's done. Yeah. You know what this is costing me, Favor? Not as much as it could have. Behind you. Anytime you want to get in a poker game, I'll back you to the limit. Doing? Oh, I don't know. Maybe go down to Mexico. Like you say, a man can't go back. Not to bounty hunting, not to broomstick guns, and not to Virginia. Forward ain't such a bad direction. Why don't you save that sermon for your crew? Might help straighten out their halos. <laughs> 